There are many things that a Tesla Powerwall can and can't do. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, what can a Tesla Powerwall back up? The answer to that question actually depends on the number of Tesla Powerwalls you have. A single Tesla Powerwall can cover up to an individual 30 amp breaker. That means that any circuits or breakers that you have that are 30 amps or less can be backed up by a single Powerwall. However, there are times where you will have circuits that are larger than 30 amps. Examples of that would be an air conditioner, a welder, um, pool pumps, uh, well pumps, or other, anything else that could be over 30 amps. If you want to run an individual circuit that is greater than 30 amps, you will need multiple power walls. The reason for this is that each power wall can cover up to 30 amps. So if you have two power walls, now you can cover up to a 60 amp individual circuit. If you have three power walls, now you can cover up to a 90 amp individual circuit. Please note that this does not apply to sub panels. So if you see a sub panel and the sub panel breaker is 100 amps, that doesn't mean that a single power wall cannot cover the entire sub panel. It strictly has to do with the ampacity of a single breaker within it. The Tesla Powerwall also has multiple functions. One of the functions of the Tesla Powerwall is to provide backup power. So when the grid goes out, anything that is being backed up by the Tesla Powerwall will have power. The amount of time that the Tesla Powerwall will actually operate those circuits will vary depending on the actual loads at the time, as well as the state of charge of the Powerwall. What's important with the backup function is that if you only have a single power wall, it can only back up circuits that are 30 amps or less. Typically, this means that it will not be able to back up air conditioners, stoves, ranges, or other high uh, ampacity circuits. If you have multiple power walls and you're in backup mode, now you can typically back up air conditioners or ranges, stoves, and other things. However, it's really important to note that just because the power wall has the ampacity to back up these circuits, it doesn't mean that it's always a good idea to do it because when you're running your air conditioner, because of the pull of that air conditioner, you could deplete an entire battery in a matter of hours compared to running your refrigerator, lights, and other critical loads. The other functionality of a Tesla Powerwall is that you can do energy arbitrage or time of use. Anytime someone goes solar now, what will happen is that you will be on a time of use rate. What's really great about batteries or the Tesla Powerwall is that you can take power that you produce in the morning and you can store it in the battery. Then, in the evenings or afternoons during peak rates, you can actually use that power rather than buying it from the grid. At any given time, if your consumption is greater than the solar's output, you can also program the power wall to actually supplement the output of the solar. So basically, you're taking the power that you put in during the morning at lower off-peak rates, rather than backfeeding the grid with that extra power, you would take that power and you would put it directly into the power wall where you would store it. Then, later in the day, when peak rates came around, which is typically in the afternoons between 4 to 9 p.m., what would happen is, is that if you are not producing enough solar at any given time, you can supplement the output of the solar so that you don't buy power at peak rates. Once the sun has gone down and the solar is not on at all, you can also have the power wall operate so that you are only taking power from the power wall and not paying high time of use rates either. Of course, at any given time, if you're consuming more power than the power wall can cover, you would take the difference from the grid. However, this is called energy arbitrage because essentially what you are doing is you are taking power that you produced at cheaper rates and you are using it or repurposing it so that you are consuming it at higher rates, which will yield you a greater savings. Please note that there are certain utilities or municipalities that don't allow net metering. If you live in one of these utilities or municipalities, you will not be able to do energy arbitrage with your battery. When adding batteries to your home, the addition of solar was always a huge benefit. However, you do not have to have solar to put batteries on your home. It's important to note that you cannot use your Tesla battery to game the system. What I mean by that is that you cannot take your Tesla Powerwall, and this assumes you don't have solar, you cannot take your Tesla Powerwall and take power directly from the utility in the mornings when the rates are cheaper store it in the battery, and then use that power later in the day to offset the more expensive rates. The only time you can do energy arbitrage is if you have solar. So if you do not have solar, the batteries can only work in backup mode. You cannot buy low and sell high with the, with the power provided directly from the utility. 